If you're an author or plan to be one, get excited because this podcast is for you. Book Marketing Mentors is the only podcast dedicated to helping you successfully market and sell your book. If you're ready for empowering conversations with successful marketing mavens, then grab a coffee or tea and listen in to your host, international best-selling author, Susan Friedman. Welcome to Book Marketing Mentors, the weekly podcast where you learn proven strategies, tools, ideas, and tips from the masters. Every week, I introduce you to a marketing master who will share their expertise to help you market and sell more books. Today, my special guest, Eric K. Johnson, is a podcasting superstar. Have you ever had the desire to start your own podcast, the itch to spread your message to the world? Have you found the technical tools, but lack the confidence in your art? Many people get ready to record their podcast only to discover the imposter syndrome. They hear that little voice inside their head asking, who do you think you are? They feel like the kid trying to sit at the adult table during the holiday feast. They feel like they are playing dress up. There are many podcasts and coaches who teach you the technical side of podcasting. Eric K. Johnson is the premier coach focused on the art of podcasting. Eric has been near the top of the radio ratings since 2000. He's also coached many others to do the same with even greater success. Eric is a nationally recognized talent coach on-air personality, and radio program director. Eric, what an absolute pleasure it is to welcome you to the show, and thank you for being this week's guest expert and mentor. Susan, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm definitely excited to have you here for many reasons, one of which is, of course, selfish, having done this program for now close on five years. But Many of my authors come and ask me about podcasting, and you've been involved in this for many, many years now. You're a real pro, a superstar, as I said. Why do you feel that people should have a podcast? A podcast allows you to talk about the subject matter that you love, that you really have a passion for. And you can do it each and every week. You have your audience coming to hear you talk about your expertise and your superpower. It's almost like having an an infomercial or a webinar every week and your ideal target listeners and your ideal clients are actually subscribing to hear you talk about it every week. I mean, it's the best way to market yourself and market your goods and services and products, your book, your expertise and your knowledge to your ideal audience because you're creating that relationship with them on a weekly basis. It's just a a fantastic marketing tool for your business. Now, I know that there are many different types of podcasts. Obviously, this interview format is one and the one I personally like for myself. But how about different other models? What other models are there out there? There's various models of episodes. There's just the lecture where you teach people a particular subject. It's a solo show. There are teams where you can do a duo show or a three-person show, and you uh, just have conversations and debates about a particular topic. You can do a magazine-style show where you're taking different parts of different interviews and bringing them together to tell a story in sort of a collage, like 60 Minutes would do on TV or some of the true crime shows on TV where you collect all of these interviews and bring them together. An interview is definitely an option. What I like to do is do a collection or a a combination of two of those, where you do a little teaching at the beginning and demonstration of your authority and your expertise. And then that rolls into the interview with a guest that backs up what you just taught. It supports the information you just provided. So that combination allows you to demonstrate your expertise and create the relationship with the audience for you and then back it up with the guests that you have because doing an interview takes less creation and time and preparation because the guest is providing a lot of the content. But it also allows you time to 
build a relationship with your audience so you can use your podcast to drive your business. If it's just 100% interview, you spend most of your time driving all of your listeners to your guests' products and services and website. And it does very little to grow your show. So I kind of like to combine multiple styles together in a single episode. Well, that's the first lesson that I'm learning here, because yes, I want to definitely introduce my audience to my guest and make them obviously look as good as possible and drive business their way. But maybe I'm doing myself a disservice by not necessarily pushing my own products or services themselves. So you and I are going to be talking about that more, (laughs) I know. It doesn't take a lot, though. A lot of people think I need to do this big 15-minute pitch on my products and services on my show, and that's not really necessary. I would give your audience one or two little nuggets they can take away that folds into what you do. Put that at the beginning before you introduce your guest or even include it at the end as a wrap-up. Just do that in post-production after the interview and tell people where they can get more of you. It really doesn't need to be that complicated or that in-depth. Just carve out a little space in your show to tell your story. I like it. I like it a lot. Well, you talked about growing your business with a podcast. Let's talk more about that because I know our listeners want to do that. There's one thing selling books, but there's another thing getting your message out there and, of course, driving business. Talk to us more about how we could use a podcast to do that. A lot of people that come to me for coaching have one of two problems. One, they want to grow their audience. And two, they want to make money with their podcast. And they kind of go hand in hand. It's difficult to make money with a podcast if you don't have a large audience. So you need to build your audience and then leverage that attention to drive your business. There are really six mistakes podcasters make when they're trying to make money with their podcast. And I won't go into all of them. I go into all six in the training that I do. But the two biggest are they don't have anything to sell. If they do have something to sell, they're not asking for the sale on their podcast. Those are the two biggest things. Now, if you're an author or you're a coach, you probably have something to sell. It could be your book, could be your program and that sort of thing. But if your podcast isn't driving your business, it's probably because you're not carving out that time on the show to actually ask for the sale. One of my friends, he's got a course that teaches online business people. And I'd known him for about six months and we're having a conversation. And in passing, he mentions, oh yeah, I talk about that in my course. And I said, wait wait a minute, wait a minute. You have a course? And he goes, oh yeah, I have a course. I've had it out for a couple of years now. I don't ever hear you talk about it. Like, how do I not know? We've known each other for six months. How do I not know you have a course? And he goes, oh, you know, I don't want people to, feel like I'm beating them over the head with it and always getting pushy. And it's always the hard sell trying to get people to buy it. And I said, well, I get that, but you don't mention it at all. How are people going to know about your course and give you money for it if you never mention it? Now, I understand you don't want to be pushy and always in your face and like, oh, here comes Bob wants to sell me again. You don't want to be that person. But if you're actually setting out to truly help people with your show and you're providing helpful, useful, valuable information on your podcast. And then you give people a way to go deeper with you by offering what you have to sell. That's not over the top, pushy in your face salesperson. That's let me give you a little bit of help. If you're interested in that and you find that useful and you want to go deeper with me, here's the opportunity to do that. And then you offer them your opportunity to get into your course or buy your book or sign up for your coaching or hire you as a speaker, whatever it happens to be. But if you start out with the heart of a teacher and help people first, but you have to follow it up with asking for the sale if you want to make money with your show. Those are very important points. Yes. I mean, when you're thinking about your own product, sometimes there's that feeling, as you rightly said, that Bob had, oh, I don't want to push it. I don't want to feel like I'm this used car salesman or salesperson. I get that a lot. I get authors don't want to promote themselves. They're frightened to promote themselves. Yet, obviously, on a podcast like this, you want people to know who you are and what you do and what you have to offer as well. This is a great example. I offer people a free podcast strategy session. People can sign up. We'll get on a a Zoom call or 
a phone call, whatever you prefer. And we'll talk about your podcast. We'll talk about where you want to go here over the next 12 months, where you are today. And then we'll develop a strategy on how to get there. We'll talk about what you've tried, what has worked, what hasn't worked, what you enjoy. And we'll just lay out a roadmap on how you can reach your goals. And that's what the strategy call is all about. And at the end of the strategy call, here's my sales pitch. Would you like some help with that? That's it. And then people say, well, yeah, what does that look like? And then I talk about my coaching. If what I've given them has been of value and they would like some help, some handholding, some step-by-step guidance, some accountability, then we can talk about what that looks like. If not, if they say, you know what? I don't think I'm ready for that right now. I think what you've given me today is good. I need to see if I can put that into place and get where I need to go. Then great. We've both made friends and we go about our way. Because coaching isn't right for everybody. Some people aren't in the right spot in their podcast growth to be ready for coaching. My coaching best helps people who are like 26 episodes in. You're about half a year into publishing your podcast. You have your sea legs under you. You kind of know what you're doing in terms of publishing the show, but your podcast growth has kind of hit a plateau and now you're ready to grow. That's where I come in. You launch your podcast and you go, okay, now what? then you're ready for coaching. And everybody that I get on a a strategy call with doesn't fit that mold. And so sometimes coaching doesn't work. Do I feel like I'm being over the top pushy and salesperson? No, not at all. I just ask them if they want some help with that. If they don't, no hard feelings. That's fine by me. When sometimes it's not right. So it's got to be right for both of us if we're going to get into the relationship. But I offer a ton of value first. And if they want more of that value, I give them the opportunity to do so. Just that simple phrase, would you like help with that? I mean, that's just so powerful because it's like if they want yes, then obviously they're going to want more, but maybe no. There's a possibility to say no too. Well, fine. Thank you. No harm done. But I think something that you stress too is giving that value because we all have so much value to give, but sometimes we're frightened to do that. I think giving people that confidence that they can share that value because, hey, they've written a book about a certain subject. They're an expert in a certain area. I sometimes feel as if I'm a stuck record, Eric. I say it's not about selling books. It's about selling the value. It's about selling the message. Obviously, a podcast is a wonderful way in which you can do all that. I love the interview strategy. You've got some keys for a powerful interview. What are those keys? Well, how can we make an interview really powerful and meaningful? The first thing you need to understand is there's only one reason that people listen to audio when they're doing whatever it is they're doing. And the only reason people listen to audio, whether that's an audio book or a podcast or the radio The one reason people listen to that audio is for companionship. They don't want to be alone. They listen to their earbuds while they're out on a jog because they don't want to be jogging by themselves. They listen to audio in the car when they're driving because they don't want to drive by themselves. Have you ever had the TV on in the background? You're not really watching it. You just want the ambient noise because you don't want to feel like you're in the house by yourself. And that's why people listen to audio. So when you're creating an interview... You want to get your guest to engage with the audience by telling stories because of its only information, it isn't engaging and it doesn't feel like companionship. If it's only information, people won't find it captivating. They won't be asking themselves, wow, I wonder what happens next. But when you get your guest to tell stories about what has happened in their journey, then people need to stick around to get closure to the story and figure out what happens next. Stories are a powerful way to bring your interviews to life and really set your interviews apart from everybody else. People don't buy the ingredients in the box. They buy the experience. And the way to give them that experience through interviews is with storytelling. I love it when my interviewees tell a story Because you rightly say, I mean, this is where you get up close and personal. You find out more. There are always lessons in stories that we can take away. So, yes, it is such a powerful way 
of interviewing and getting people involved. And I always love these interviews to be like a fireside chat. You and I are having this fireside chat, but I always say it's a fireside chat with a purpose because, as I mentioned to you earlier, I want people after they finish listening to the interview to say, oh, I can do that. There's something that, you know, my guest has revealed that allows someone to say, yes, that's easy. That's something I can do. And that's what I want people to take away. And that can come through a story that my guest has shared. The old saying is people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. And there's no better way to let your audience get to know who you are and decide whether or not they like you and decide if they trust you than through the stories that you tell. Because when you include all of the details in your story, your listeners get to understand what you value and what you believe in and what sort of person you are by the stories that you tell, because it talks about your actions and your interactions with others. That's how people get to know who you are and what you're all about. There's no better way to create that no like, and trust than by telling stories through a podcast. If you were to recommend to our listeners, let's say being a podcast guest, what are some of the highlights or some of the must-dos for you to be sort of that great podcast guest? Remember that when people listen to a podcast, they're going to take away one big thing. If I ask you, did you listen to the episode last week? And you say, oh, yeah, you'll remember one big concept, one big takeaway from that episode. When you go in to be a guest for a podcast, have that one fantastic story that you want to tell that really makes people go, wow, you know, I can do that as well. You know, when I started in podcasting, even though I'd been in radio for over 20 years, I had that little voice inside my head saying, yeah, sure, you've been on the radio, but who are you to do a podcast? And the same thing happened when I started in radio. I actually got a degree in architecture and I fell into radio by accident because my brother happened to work at a radio station. Well, I got the job at the radio station where he worked. And then I ended up taking an elective, getting my architecture degree. I took broadcasting for the non-major because I figured I already worked at a radio station. There's an easy A. I'll go ahead and take that class. That turned into becoming the music director at the campus radio station. And that turned into a full-time job at a radio station. And I just finished my architecture degree and I kept going in radio. But in my head, I kept thinking, all of these people are going to find me out. Like I don't have a degree in radio or in journalism or in broadcasting. They're all going to figure out that I'm a fake. I'm just faking my way through this whole thing. It wasn't until probably five or six years into my career when I got to be the program director and run the radio station that I really started to believe that I could do it, that that voice inside my head started going away. But then when I launched my podcast, it all started coming back. And I said, wait a minute, I've done this before. I don't need to second guess myself. I can do this. Sure enough, I found great success in podcasting as well. And as you go into being a guest on a show, Tell a great story. Remember, they're going to take away one big concept. Figure out what your journey is and what your big takeaway. Give them an aha moment. You only need one. doesn't need to be 30 minutes of dropping bombs the entire time. You just have to have one great concept that people take away and give them something to remember. They're not going to remember your six steps. They're going to remember your story. Find your story and tell that as you're a guest. Great piece of information. What led you to podcasting? The difference between radio and podcasting. Help us with that journey. You bet. So I started listening to podcasts right around 2010. As I listened to them, it sounded so amateur because anybody could do it. And I would listen to it and and I thought, man, they have some great content. If they only knew some of the basics that we learn in radio in order to concise concepts, brevity, economy of words, keep the forward momentum going, use of storytelling, use of visual language, bringing stories to life in the theater of the mind. If they only knew just a few of these things, their shows could be so much better. And I thought, well, who better to teach them than me? Because I've been teaching radio personalities for decades 
I've launched successful radio stations from nothing. I've launched successful morning shows and afternoon personalities from zero. I've taken a radio station from launch to number one in the market in 12 months. I've taken heritage radio stations to number one in the market. I've taken all of these concepts that I've learned to attract an audience and grow businesses and attract ideal clients for our clients. And I distilled that all into a process that I teach podcasters now. The thing I love about podcasting is that it's my favorite medium because of the relationships that it creates. You and I have a meeting every Friday at noon because that's when you listen to my show and you spend 30 minutes with me every week listening to Podcast Talent Coach and getting that great information. And I share some stories with you and we bond for 30 minutes every week. It's an amazing way to create that relationship. And that's what drew me to podcasting. Just the intimacy of the format and the platform. The thing I love about podcasting over, let's say you have a blog or you're creating YouTube videos. You know, there are various ways you can get your message out on the internet. If you're an author and you want to get your message out on the internet, you can write a blog, you can create YouTube videos, or you can create a podcast. And the reason I love podcasting is it's portable. You can take me with you everywhere you go. If you go out on a jog, you can listen to my podcast. Really difficult to read my blog while you're out jogging. It's kind of difficult to watch a video while you're driving in your car, but you can listen to my podcast. If you're taking a shower, you can listen to my podcast in the shower if you'd like. Pretty difficult to read a blog or watch a video in the shower. So I love the portability of podcasting. Podcasting is growing by leaps and bounds. There's over a million podcasts available now. And studies show that it's growing at an annual compound rate of about 20%, which means the audience could double in the next five years. So it's growing like crazy. And it's a young format. Yeah, there are 1 million podcasts out today. And you're thinking, Eric, man, how can I stand out in one in a million? Well, if you look at podcasts to blogs to YouTube videos, there are about 35 million YouTube channels out there. Not videos. There are billions of videos and not even content creators. This is actual channels. 35 million YouTube channels. 1 million podcasts. 35 million YouTube channels, there are 600 million blogs. So do you want to try and stand out and be one in 600 million or one in a million? It's so interesting because the next question I actually had for you, what was the future? Or what do you see the future of podcasting, which you absolutely must have read my mind in advance. <laughs> so thank you. Right now, we're on the precipice of big things for podcasting because if you look, you'll see a lot of the big companies getting into podcasting. Amazon just made a purchase of a podcast producer. iHeartRadio has purchased uh, How Stuff Works and other podcast producers. All of these podcast producers are getting swallowed up by large companies because podcasting is a way to create that amazing relationship in a very specific niche. It's the antithesis of broadcasting. Broadcasting, you put your message out to a broad audience and hope you hit your specific niche somewhere in that broad audience. With podcasting, you know exactly what you're getting. If you want to reach authors, you know which podcasts to go to. If you want to reach podcasters, you know which one to go to. If you want to reach accountants, you know which podcast to go to. It's very specific. The marketing possibilities in podcasting are phenomenal. And that's why the big companies are getting in. And now's a great time to do that. That's music to my ears, just hearing you say that, because I was convinced right at the get-go that this was a great medium to use. The more I get into it, the more I realize that I was absolutely right and I love it and I love moving forward with it. So now, now here's the big mistake that podcasters make though. It's just like being an author. Creating your podcast isn't enough. You can't just put the podcast out there and hope they come. This isn't build it and they will come sort of process. You have to market your podcast and get it in front of people who aren't aware of you and who don't know anything about you or your podcast in order for your audience to grow. So many people think, well, I just get it on Apple Podcasts and I'm all good. That's not how it works. It's just like your book. 
Just because your book is on the shelf doesn't mean people are going to come buy it. You have to get out and you have to market it. You have to tell people about it. It's the same thing as with your podcast. And that's what I teach. I teach three legs of the stool with your podcast. The first is your promotion. Let's go out and let's tell people about your show so they can come and try it out. We have to go get in front of an audience who doesn't know who you are. And that's a lot of uh, joint venture partnerships and appearances on other shows. And how can you help somebody else and they can help you as well? You find that partnership. That's your promotions piece. Your programming piece, that's what you talk about. That's the niche. If you're doing a podcast on accounting, let's go find ways for you to get in front of groups of people who are interested in accounting and then tell them what your show is all about. Tell them about your programming so they think, wow, okay, that sounds like something I could use and they'll come check out your show. Now, the thing everybody misses, the secret sauce that nobody teaches you is that you need to keep them coming back episode after episode. Just because your show is great doesn't mean they're coming back next week. Your personality is the third P of the process. Your personality is what creates that relationship and keeps people coming back week after week after week. If you don't keep people coming back, it's like putting water in a bucket with holes in the bottom. You're never going to fill that bucket. And the same thing happens with you when you're growing your podcast audience. If you're not keeping your current listeners coming back while adding more listeners, your audience is never going to grow. You have to do both. And your personality is what keeps them coming back. They think, wow, I really like Susan. I'm coming back to listen next week. And you do that through the stories that you tell. Because anybody can teach your six steps to success. All I got to do is copy it. And I can teach the same thing. The thing that makes your six steps to success different is your personality. People love who you are. They love what comes out. That doesn't mean you need to be over the top. You don't have to be people like, Gary Vaynerchuk or some of these other big online marketers who are just over the top and in your face. You just have to decide which facets of your personality you want to highlight and let people love you for it. And that's what people don't teach you. If you have the three P's, the promotion, the programming, and the personality, your show will grow. Your influence and your authority and expertise in the space will grow as well. Which is a great segue, Eric, into you telling our listeners how they can find out more about you, your programs, your different coaching, consulting sessions. This has been amazing. So take it away. Tell our listeners. I appreciate that. I do have a webinar coming up. It's called How to Attract Your Ideal Clients and Make Money with Your Podcast. I go over a lot of what we just talked about, but in greater detail. We talk about the six mistakes most podcasters make when they're trying to make money with their podcast. We talk about the three P's and how to develop those within your show. I talk about the three challenges most podcasters face as they're trying to attract their ideal clients with their show and as they are trying to make money with their podcast. If you'd like to join in that webinar, go to podcasttalentcoach.com slash Aviva. That's podcasttalentcoach.com slash Aviva, A-V-I-V-A. You'll find the link to the online training there. It's a webinar, but a lot of people think, oh, webinar, all he's going to do is sell me. I hope that here over the last 30 minutes or so that I've explained to you, I'm not all about selling. I'm about offering you some incredible value. And if you want more of that value, I'll give you an opportunity to learn how to do that. But the training gives you actionable steps. I have a a money workbook that we walk through, through the training and you're filling it in and you're actually walking away with ideas and concepts that you can use in your journey to grow your podcast, to grow your audience, to attract your ideal clients. It's all in there. Go to podcasttalentcoach.com slash Aviva. You'll see the training link right there. And uh, I'd love to have you come join us. Oh, fabulous. And listeners, any of you who are sitting on the fence about podcasting, definitely go and check that out. And that'll be in the show notes. If you were to leave our listeners with a golden nugget, what would that be, Eric? If you are going to start a podcast or you're going to do a podcast, there's two things you need to remember. One is make sure you're consistent. People are creatures of habit. And so they want to listen to your podcast at the same time every week. 
It doesn't matter what day you publish, as long as it's there when they come to listen, make sure that you're consistent. And the second thing is when you're starting your podcast, make sure that you are talking about a subject matter that you love. If you don't, your podcast is going to feel like work. It's going to feel like work having to get in and record it every week. Oh, I got to produce another episode this week. If it's something you love to talk about, if it's a topic that occupies your conversation day in and day out, it's probably a great idea for a podcast. And one way you can figure that out is sit down with a blank sheet of paper, just start brainstorming topic ideas for your podcast. And if you can come up with 40 or 50 topic ideas in about 10 minutes, you're probably on the right track. If you struggle to do that, you should probably consider another podcast idea because it has to be something you love for it to be successful. Yeah. Do what you love. I love that because I know that I love doing this. I love interviewing guests, love getting to know them. And listeners, this has been such a treat to have Eric share his wisdom with us. Eric, thank you for being such a fabulous guest, a pro. I said you were a podcasting superstar and you've proved it. Thank you. And thank you all for taking time to listen to this interview. And I sincerely hope that it sparks some ideas you can use to sell more books. Here's wishing you much book marketing success. The time is now to take action and finally build your book selling empire. And the great news is that Susan is here to help you. Visit bookmarketingmentors.com and sign up for a free 15-minute book marketing strategy session with Susan. She'll help you discover your first steps to marketing and selling your book. Only those who take action are rewarded. So visit bookmarketingmentors.com and we'll see you again next week.